let's continue our discussion about economic growth or more specifically here we're going to talk about the policies that could be used to promote economic prosperity um, the economic growth or the expansion of an economy sounds too big uh, too far away from our real life so let's start with the indi uh, individual example okay a micro level example which is uh, hopefully closer to um, what we are familiar with now here let's think about uh, the situation where you were running a pumpkin farm okay so you're trying to produce more pumpkins what exactly uh, you need to be able to produce more pumpkins okay once we figure this out we can um, go ahead and talk about economic growth or the policies to promote that okay uh, oftentimes we say what's true for individuals uh, will be true for the country okay or the society now what exactly you lead again think about the real stuff instead of the monetary assets okay i would encourage you to pause the video and give yourself a, a couple of minutes uh, to come up with a list of the uh, resources or the stuff you need to be able to produce more pumpkins all right here let's continue our discussion and um, I'm gonna just write the um, resources on the slides okay so that we don't have to uh, switch back and forth between the slides and the whiteboard so uh, first of all uh, many of you probably I would guess uh, can say that we lead more farmers right so if you have more um, helpers in the fields then you can produce more right and you probably want more land to be able to grow pumpkins okay and um, what about tractors right you probably need the tractors or better tractors more productive tractors um, in these days we also find the farmers um, actually heavily um, relying upon the computers okay so they use computers to follow the weather forecasts or to monitor uh, the growth of the field okay you probably also want to try the new pesticides how about that right or fertilizers So here you may find, you know, these are the resources. You, you know, you can definitely come up with more than these. So this is not going to be in the thorough list. Okay. Um, now we can think about, you know, these things we already come up with. They are the examples of what factor of production. So for example, the farmers. We all know that it's an example of labor, right? Land is just an example of land, but here we specifically talk about the surface of the land, not the natural resources. Okay. Um, tractors and computers, they are man-made means of production. They are, equi they are equipment, tools, or the machineries. Okay. Um, so they are capital. Okay, uh, pesticides and fertilizers, they are the examples of technology. Okay, in other words, when we go from an individual, a, a small pumpkin farm to the entire US economy, we basically look at these four uh, factors of production. Okay, as we said before, if we can somehow uh, increase for example, our land or labor or capital or technology or probably all of these, uh, then we could promote the economic growth in the long term. Okay. The next question would be how? 
right? As a policymaker, you really want to know how exactly um, you, know, you can achieve that goal. Okay. Now, for different factors of production, you should try different policies. Okay. Uh, for example, when we talk about the labor, okay, for the entire economy, we definitely want to see more workers. Okay. Uh, however, if you look at the, the recent birth rate or fertility rate in the United States, it's not pretty high. Okay. We're approximately a, a, around the replacement ratio. Okay. In other words, it's 2.1 uh, children per woman during her lifetime. Okay. And um, so we probably need to think about other ways. Uh, we could think about immigration. Uh, we could have um, uh, a new immigration policies that would attract more people um, to the United States. Or we could encourage American couples to have more children. Okay? Um, if you look at around the world, in Europe, in Japan, their governments already tried very hard to provide some financial incentives uh, for people to have more children. Okay? Um, capital and technology are more challenging. Okay? However, they are also more persistent driving force of economic growth. So here, let's take capital as an example. Okay, we talk about how um, exactly or what exactly a, a policymaker needs to do, okay, or the entire economy needs to do to increase our capital stock. Okay, if you are interested in technology, we can talk about that during our online virtual meeting. Okay, now. To be able to get more equipment, um, tools, we need to have more of the investment, right? We need to invest. In other words, we need to purchase these uh, equipment, tools, machineries, so that we have a larger stock of capital goods. So here, what we're saying is we lead investment okay, to be able to have more capital. Now, how can we have more investment? That's a more challenging question. Again, here, let's think about a very hypothetical but simple um, scenario. Okay, let's start with this hypothetical economy where everybody is a farmer. Okay, so everybody is growing pumpkins. Okay. Um, however, we do know that if we can get some machinery equipment, we can produce more. We can each of us can be more efficient, more productive. Okay. But where exactly we're gonna get these machinery equipment? Now, an easy answer is we can import it. Right? Remember, in this economy, everybody is a farmer. Nobody is producing equipment or tools. So we can import from other countries. Okay? If we don't want to import, we don't want to rely upon other economies, probably because of the national safety concerns or security concerns. Um, we just want to produce by ourselves. So what we need to do is we would probably ask a group of farmers to leave their pumpkin farm and go to the factory, start producing equipment for us, right? That's how we can get the new equipment. However, for this group of farmers being asked to leave their farm, the very first question in front of them is how could they survive? Okay? How could they survive before they successfully make the very first piece of equipment. Okay, so here the rest of the people in this economy have to agree that they're gonna produce more pumpkins than what they consume, right? So that they have extra pumpkins they can use to feed these workers. All right, so in the long run, the workers can produce the equipment and put them on the market. Okay, in other words, here, what we're saying is to be able to invest, the economy has to save in the first place. Okay, they have to save in the first place. 
So that's why here, basically, we're talking about the piggy bank. Okay? If we save more, we're going to do more, make more investment. In the end, we can get more capital goods. Okay? So the economy can grow faster because each worker, or I'm sorry, each farmer will get the equipment tools and become more productive in the pumpkin field. Okay? Now, one thing I do want to point out is here, when we talk about the save, we are talking about the production. In other words, what we produce is greater than our consumption. Okay. Once again, we are reluctant to use the monetary way to define saving. Okay. In the real world, when we talk about saving, we we'll probably talk about you know the money we put under our mattress or put into our bank account. But here, when we talk about the real economy, we would like to say it's our production that exceeds our consumption. Okay. So here, believe it or not, uh, we already talked about a very important insight Adam Smith mentioned in his book. Um, this is the role of the saving in economic growth. Okay? If you want to grow faster, you get you got to save more. All right. Now, on the next slide, we're going to talk about the empirical evidence. So previously, uh, on the previous slide, we've been talking about the theory, the logical reasoning. Is that true on the ground? That's what we need to figure out. Okay. So here. On this table, we're showing you the saving rates for different countries. Okay, and um, I want to drive your attention to the very first column, which is called the gross national saving. Um, national saving means how much the households and firms and the government save all together. Okay, um, you can also find household saving and consumptions on this table. So the consumption and saving are the two sides of the same coin, right? The more we consume, the next we save. Uh, the very last one, CA balance, that's a current account balance. That's how much we save through international trade. We don't have to worry about the other columns. Just look at the very first one. You would find that um, the top panel, uh, which includes China, Korea, Malaysia, uh, Singapore, Thailand, and India, they're national saving rates uh, are much higher than the bottom group of countries okay so the top group or top panel the lowest saving rate among them is india 28.1 percent the highest is singapore almost um 47 percent when you look at the bottom panel you find that the lowest one is the united states 13.5%. The highest one is Japan, 25.7%. When you also look at the economic growth rate, you will find that the top group of countries are all superstars in terms of economic growth. Okay, um, China, um, India, again, they're growing pretty fast. Uh, Korea, Singapore, they grew pretty fast. Um, back in 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, right? Malaysia and Thailand are also growing pretty quickly. Uh, the bottom group, their growth rate are much lower. Okay. In other words, we do find the correlation, the positive correlation between your saving rate and your economic growth rate, okay? which supports the logical reasoning we did before. The more we save, the faster we can grow. Okay. Now, if you look at the bottom group, you would find that, um, as we said, the, the best one here, the highest saving rate we can find is Japan, right? Remember, this data is the recent one. I think it's um, uh, 2010s. So if we look at the Japan back in 1960s, 1970s, the saving rate in Japan was as high as that in Singapore or China these days. In other words, Japanese used to save approximately 40 to 50 percent. Okay, that's an extremely high saving rate. That's why back then Japanese economy 
also grew pretty quickly. All right. So the